and welcome to our web series, Publishing in Paradise. I'm your host, Tara Richter, president of Richter Publishing, and we are broadcasting to you from sunny Clearwater, Florida. Each week, we're going to interview a new author, talk to them about their book, and dive into the indie publishing process. So grab a cup of coffee or pour yourself a glass of wine and come on in and join us. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Publishing in Paradise. I am your host, Tara Richter, president of Richter Publishing, and today in the studio we have author Alder Allensworth, and she is here with her book, Prevail, Celebrate the Journey. Thanks for coming today. Oh, thank you for having me. This is great. Absolutely. So why don't you tell us a little bit about why you were inspired to write this book? I had gone to a cancer support group and I'm listening to everyone talk and I'm 28 years cancer free and this was just kind of on a whim that I went and most of these people were new into the diagnosis. I thought, you know, I should write about my journey. Mm -hmm. So I got home, got inspired and started writing about it and then it just flowed into a trip that I had taken in the year 2000 where I sailed a 12-foot boat 1,200 miles to raise money and awareness for people with disabilities. And that's the boat that's right here on the cover of the book. Correct. That mm -hmm. is the Prevail. So you wrote this story uh, 18 years ago? Is that when you started writing it? or No. When mm -hmm. I, I wrote this book, when gosh, two years ago now? Okay. Right before I sent the manuscript in to you. Okay. And I had, from 2000, all the um, emails, all the writings that I had from that mm -hmm. trip, okay. all the videos, all the newspaper articles, the mm -hmm. piece that CNN did on it, mm -hmm. and so I was just able to incorporate that in the story and put it all together. Gotcha. So now what some people may not know, Alder actually won our writing contest in 2017 mm -hmm. at the book festival. So she submitted her manuscript, she won, and it was literally um, not even like, was it, it was like in February when the book came out. It was like maybe three months later. That's right. Yeah, it was a really quick, <laughs> quick <laughs> process. <laughs> so that's amazing. So why don't you tell them a little bit about your story um, you know, about the cancer that you started talking about and, you know, everything that entails in your memoir. Well, in 1990, I had just finished my master's degree and I found a funny lump kind of poking out on top of my eye under my eyelid. Mm -hmm. And it was discovered to be something called adenocystic carcinoma of the lacrimal gland. And it is a very rare cancer. I was case 80 documented in the world. Mm -hmm. And the only- Case 80. Case 80. In the world. Correct. That's crazy. And no one had survived. Yeah, wow. So they told me my only chance to live was to have everything out on the side of my face. Mm -hmm. And I had to make the decision quick because it's a very aggressive cancer. Mm -hmm. I was only 33 mm -hmm. and I thought, well, I honor my life, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not a hard choice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you think about it, it's just one small part of your body. Exactly. You know? And it was a good choice. It worked well, out great. Yeah. Lost the I mean, eye, but here yeah. I am 28 years later. Exactly. I mean, I think some people, you know, when it is like, you know, you lose a leg or an arm mm -hmm. or something, it is, you know, depressing and, you know, because you're losing a piece of yourself, but think of everything else that you have left. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I had never written that journey through that and mm -hmm. what that felt like. Mm -hmm. So it was really a catharsis for me to sit down and write that after being in that support group mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. hoping that people could take something away, mm -hmm. that they could feel that it's okay, go for that treatment, lose that body part, mm -hmm. if it's going to mean that you can live. Right, exactly. I mean, you see the people out there that 
have I mean, no legs or arms. Mm -hmm. um, there's a man that lives here locally, um, Pedro, and I can't remember what his disease was, but he lost all of his limbs. Wow. And I mean, that's difficult, but you know, he's still living and he yeah. has the prosthetic legs and the prosthetic arms. And I mean, that to me is just like amazing. Like that would be even yeah. more difficult. You know, I mean, it's all difficult, but um, to lose all of your limbs and mm -hmm. still be able to push forward. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping that writing this inspires people to look at, like your friend Pedro, he's looking at what he has. Exactly. Not what he doesn't have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how you get through it. Absolutely. I mean, this is just, it's a great story. Um, it's, you know, we uh, go through your journey and we have the maps of where you sailed um, this vessel from. Okay, remind me again where you started. Did you start at the Keys and then go up to Maine? Or you started here in uh, Tampa Bay area? I started in St. Pete. Mm -hmm. It was um, for a sailing program for people with disabilities. And this is their school boat. Mm -hmm. And it's only 12 feet long. It's oh, not a very crazy. big boat. It's their school no. boat. And they came up with this idea for someone to sail this boat to Maine to mm -hmm. raise money and awareness for people with disabilities and for <laughs> sailors with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And so they asked me to do it. <laughs> I said, sure. <laughs> I'm always up for an adventure. <laughs> so the chronicles the trip from St. Petersburg, Florida mm -hmm. down through the Keys, which was amazing. Mm -hmm up the East Coast and it follows my journey and the people who I lives touched me and hopefully I touched their lives mm -hmm. and when I finished the trip because CNN followed the trip too which was just Did incredible. Did it follow the whole way? Yes. That's awesome. And when I finished the trip and came back mm -hmm. I decided to start a sailing program for people with disabilities for the community mm -hmm. right here in Clearwater. And that's called Sailability. Yes, that's Sailability Greater Tampa Bay. And because of the support of CNN, I was able to get a lot of support from this community oh, to make that great. happen. That is, so tell us a little bit about your journey. So how long would you sail for? Like, um, you know, was it like 10 hours at a time or? Usually I was on the water about eight hours. Okay. Um, I needed to, I couldn't sail at night, mm -hmm. so I'd have to find a place to anchor, and then I'd erect my little tent, and I'd have my little snack. Mm -hmm. I couldn't carry much. I didn't have any cooking facilities, any yeah. refrigeration, so wow. it was snacks and that type of thing, but the purpose was to be seen. Mm -hmm. So I stopped at a lot of marinas, a mm -hmm. lot of people hosted me mm -hmm. along the way, which was just awesome. Mm -hmm. And they fed me good when I was oh, in that's port. Good. <laughs> I was say, that's a long trip. You know, you can't like have like really that much food with you or a cooler no. or you know, you don't have a car when no. you when you dock and you're you know at the all these like random places and stuff and people are awesome they help you some guy let me his bike so i could go to the grocery store and he had mm -hmm. a big basket on it i put my gas jug in it mm -hmm. or someone say hey let me drive you to the store from the marina um let's go get gas somewhere people were just that's awesome wonderful people said to me aren't you scared to be out there alone a woman alone People are really nice in this world. <laughs> You're like, no, not at all. It's uh -oh. like, you know, and then, because like, but you hugged the coastline, so you yes. weren't really far out. You didn't go out into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean or, you no. know, any, like, because you couldn't in a boat that size. If there was any kind of storms or... Well, storm, a big storm on Tampa Bay would be pretty scary. Right. And I had to cross big bodies of water bigger than Tampa Bay, mm -hmm. so had my moments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you see any kind of crazy wildlife out there that made you nervous? Wildlife? Um, the only sharks. wildlife <laughs> that really made me nervous are those land sharks. Oh, yeah. Those ones with the two legs. Oh. that get a little drunk in the marinas and <laughs> those oh, kind of land, land sharks. sharks. <laughs> That's funny. So they were worse than the sharks in the water? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, I never saw any sharks in the water. <laughs> you know, I don't really see sharks that often here either, even though I've lived here for like 17 years. I'll see dolphins, I've seen manatees, you know, all that kind of stuff. I haven't seen many sharks. There's a lot of sharks, but they stay underwater. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're more like <laughs> bottom feeders, right? Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, so this is the first book that you've written mm -hmm. and published. And like I said, you know, you won the contest with Richter Publishing. We do a writing contest annually. We have our next one coming up that the, uh, the submission's already been sent in, mm -hmm. but we're going to unveil the winner at the book festival uh -huh. on November 2nd that Alder is going to be a part of. So if you come out to our book festival, you'll meet Alder, get a copy of her book, get it autographed. But so for, since this was your first book and the publishing experience and we're an indie publisher, um, share with us how you felt the process went uh, mm. with our team. It was really an incredible process. First, I kind of flunked English. I mean, I barely <laughs> made it through English in school. Did you? And the fact that I even finished a whole manuscript mm -hmm. and you liked it <laughs> enough to give me the prize was just amazing yeah. to me in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then when we got into the nitty gritty of going back and forth with the editing process, mm -hmm. that was really fantastic. Mm -hmm. And what I really liked was a lot of your editors knew nothing about sailing. Mm -hmm. And I used a lot of sailing terms. Right. So they would come back to me, what's this, what's that? <laughs> and I hadn't even thought about an audience understanding it. So it mm -hmm. gave me an opportunity to change things, beef things up, amend things. So the process was really nice with the back and forth. We yeah. went back and forth what, three times yep. each. Yeah, it's usually three rounds of edits. Mm -hmm. And then pushing the button was really hard. <laughs> it is. We were just talking about this with Jaron, with our other uh, author. He is just at that point to push the button. And I'm like, push the button. you got to push it. Everybody goes through a fear at that point, uh -huh. and I think it's, um, I mean, because I went through it myself, because I have 10 books, and it's like, okay, you have it, you want it, you work so hard for it, but it's putting your soul out there. That's right. To the world, to basically mm -hmm. read and judge you. But, I mean, I know from my experience, and I'm sure you can share too, once you do it, it's just an amazing feeling. Yeah, it really was. It really was. Well, first it was sheer terror <laughs> because I was like going, oh my gosh, I'm going to be so judged by what I said of this and what I said of that. Mm -hmm. and, but once I got over that and people would come up to me and say, I read your book, I couldn't put it down. Mm -hmm. And that's what most people say to me. Yeah. I couldn't put it down. Mm -hmm. Like amazed by that. Right. And I've had a lot of emails from people who are dealing with cancer or dealing with a deformity of some sort. And they say it's so inspirational. Mm -hmm. Thank you for writing it. I felt yes. that way too. Absolutely. No, it is. It's a great story. It's an inspirational story, you know, and, and it was actually really well written. So I'm surprised you said you like failed English, <laughs> almost failed English. So my dad sailed a 35 foot catamaran from South Africa mm -hmm. across the Atlantic Ocean to the Keys. And they were on the ocean, I think, for three months. Wow. Three months, and they went two weeks without seeing any other boats or land, period. Oh, and, you know, this is a small boat, and, you know, in comparison to the 35 foot catamaran, but my dad said when you're out in the open water, that 35 foot catamaran is like you're on a dinghy. <laughs> yes, it shrinks real quick. <laughs> like I know they went over like a school of whales and that was his one moment where he was like felt so small in the world. It's like this school of whales could come up and just flip our boat and like we would be done. Oh yeah. Obviously it didn't happen. He's still alive mm -hmm. and well. <laughs> Sometimes our greatest fears never happen. Exactly. <laughs> Thank goodness. But yeah. I remember going through, and you know, that journey with them, which was, I think, maybe, uh, gosh, like 15, 16 years ago now. Um, my dad and my brother did that with a skipper. Um, but my whole point was, you know, going through the editing process with the, the mm -hmm. sailing terminology. You know, my dad was in the Navy. He's a sailor. He's had boats, yeah. you know, my entire life. 
and um, I thought I knew a lot about sailing, but when we went in and were digging into the edits of your book, I also was like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so I think that was a good thing, you know, just to describe it so in layman's terms so that everybody yeah. can understand, you know, and enjoy the story. And that was really good feedback because we had a discussion, should I put a glossary in mm -hmm. here of what these terms mean? But I was afraid, one, a plagiarism because how do you write a definition without plagiarizing a definition? Well, and yeah, we, but that's not plagiarism when you're defining mm -hmm. something. That's just like something from the dictionary just so people understand yes. what the word is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was one concern I had. and. As we talked, you were like, yeah, but people having to flip back and forth, and if it's electronic, and mm -hmm. kind of lose the flow. So we decided that I would explain the terms within the text. Mm -hmm. And as I was doing that, it was a lot of fun, because I could throw some action in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With explaining the terms and use action to do that. So that mm -hmm. was a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, I really like doing that. I just think, you know, as an avid reader myself, I've run, I've, I've, run, I've read thousands of books, uh -huh. and um, if I don't understand a word, I don't want to flip to the back. I don't want to yeah. look it up. It's nice to just have it right there so that it just flows in the story. I think it makes yeah. it a lot easier on the reader. Yeah, so that was a great suggestion. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, since like, you know, with our company, we're doing things opposite than, you know, traditional mm -hmm. publishing. Um, and honestly, what I've found being in the business for five years, there's really no right or wrong way to publish mm -hmm. a book. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can really do whatever you want. There's, I mean, there's standards, but yet you can do anything. I remember one day I was going through Barnes & Noble and I was just flipping through books from traditional publishing mm -hmm. houses, you know, like Penguin and Random House. And it was actually a book, a memoir by uh, Neil Patrick Harris. And I'm flipping through it, and he has no chapters. Like, oh, wow. a basic layout of a book is having chapters and, you know, page numbers, and he had no chapters. And I'm like, if Neil Patrick Harris can have no chapters uh -huh. in a book, that really just kind of gave me an ease of, like, you know, there really is no right or wrong way. Yeah. I think it's really about getting a story out there mm -hmm. and getting it out there as best as possible and, you know, and accessible to people. Most people aren't even going to realize, you know, headers, footers, stuff like that. I mean, and, and it's funny because we kind of fight with authors sometimes, like even if you've read a lot of books and then once you get your book, one of the main things people complain about is, well, why does a chapter start all the way down here? Well, it doesn't start here. Like, it, like if you go yeah. back and look at all these books, they all start like in the middle of the page. Right. You know, because it's a break for your eye and for the reader to mm -hmm. know, oh, okay, we're on to like something new. Exactly. Yeah, I'm an avid reader too, and I love quotes at mm -hmm. the beginning of a chapter in books I read. So when I wrote this, I had to have a quote at the beginning yeah. of every chapter. Absolutely. Just because I love that. Yeah, and that's a great thing. You know, with like indie publishing, it's a lot more flexible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can really do whatever we want. And the, you know, honestly, the final say, you know, I would like to say I have the final say, but honestly, you have the final say. Mm -hmm. Because it's your book, it's your baby, it's your story, and we want you to be happy with it. So, you know, we'll give you advice, mm -hmm. or professional advice. <laughs> yes. And some authors take it, and some authors don't. And it's like after three or four arguments, it's like, all right, well, if that's what they want, let's do it. You know, because once again, it's about having a book out that you're happy with, mm -hmm. you know. Like the cover, I was like, oh, good, I'm going to put the cover in their hands because art <laughs> is not my thing. Well, then the covers that you all came up with just didn't do it for me, and I thought, mm -hmm. Well, I just can't go back and say, no, I don't like these, send me more. <laughs> I mean, I didn't think that was fair. Yeah. So I thought, well, maybe I'll try to design my own. Mm -hmm. So I came up with this idea, but I had red and all sorts of other <laughs> stuff on it. And you said, well, why don't we do this blue? Mm -hmm. And it was perfect. Yeah. So I love that collaboration. Absolutely. And that's the thing, you know, sometimes 
we come up with designs and like that you just don't like it at all mm -hmm. and that happens you know but it, it's a collaboration it's a yeah. work together and you know that's what we'll have the authors sometimes go look at books on Amazon for mm -hmm. you know ideas that they wanted and obviously you know with some of your photos because they are old you know because right. this happened a while ago that's the only concern is that it's not going to print as high resolution but you know sometimes it doesn't matter mm -hmm. I mean you still get the gist of it you know, obviously people know this wasn't taken in 2018 with an iPhone <laughs> yeah. 8 Plus or right. <laughs> a professional camera. But it's still, like it still is for Yeah. No, I think it turned out well. I think it really does because it, you know, people can then see and understand, you know, everything that you're talking about. And then, you know, with I, I still love the wheelchairs on the back too. Yeah. Because this is over at Saleability, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, my brother, we were going to try to get him yes. to come and do that and the weather, well they canceled it because they thought the weather was gonna be bad and ended up being gorgeous. I know. Um, unfortunately, but he's coming back in January, so hopefully we can get him again because um, I think this is really cool, you know, that saleability helps people with disabilities in wheelchairs. Um, I mean, they have all kinds of ranges of disabilities that you guys help them with. Now we had a guy, Toddy Man to Sale, who's a ventilated quadriplegic, like Christopher Reeve. Wow. And he sailed with his chin, because that's the only thing he could move on his body was his head. Mm -hmm. And actually we got the money for the boat from the Christopher Reeve Foundation. Oh, wow. And the boat has a special watertight compartment that mm -hmm. you put the ventilator in. Mm -hmm. So the ventilator goes with him, hooks into his trach, mm -hmm. And off he goes sailing by himself. Wow, that's amazing. Now, if the ventilator quit, he has five minutes to live. Oh, jeez. So we had a special strobe light mm -hmm. on the back, and this was all designed by the biomed engineering department at the VA hospital, because yeah. he lived at the VA. Okay. So they did that, and then Custom Mobility designed all the seating to make sure, because he couldn't hold himself up. Right. So they designed the seat to hold him in the right position, mm -hmm. and he could go sail by himself. Wow. We had a team of medical personnel on a safety boat, mm -hmm. we just kind of follow him around, but he yeah, took the lead. Just in case. Yeah. You, we were there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. But he took the lead. Wow. It was his time to sail. Yeah, that's amazing. And that's what I want for my brother because, you yeah. know, he has epilepsy. And so, I mean, he doesn't need all that extra special equipment. But for him, I think it's more of like um, a self-esteem issue. Absolutely. Because you know? it's when you have a disability, a lot of people tell you you can't do something. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing is yeah. allowing somebody to do something like that. You know, when yeah. before you're so dependent on other people, but to go out there and sail a boat like that and with a ventilator on your own, like that's just amazing. The whole premise is to teach people to captain their own boats, mm -hmm. not give sailboat rides. Anybody exactly. can go for a ride. Right. But as you said, the self-esteem factor of, I can sail. Mm -hmm. I can captain my own boat. Yeah. That's, that's so. Yeah, it's awesome. So awesome. I can't wait to come out in January, February. He'll yeah. be here for like three, four months, so we're definitely going to make one happen. <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> we will. All right, so Elder, you can get a copy of her book on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, everywhere books are sold. And again, she's going to be at the Book Festival on Friday, November 2nd. If you guys are in the area, come on out. You can meet Elder, get a copy of her um, book, get it autographed. We're going to have uh, food, drinks, live jazz music, and the closing ceremonies are actually going to have a fire breather. <laughs> Wow, that'll be fun. I know. We just had to keep them away from the books. <laughs> Far off from the books, yeah. but it's going to be a good time. So, hope you guys can come out and join us. See you then.